It was a great time in 1963 for all of us to be going on this because the public was becoming aware of the handcraft tradition, not only in North Carolina, but worldwide almost. There was just a real awakening. I was the craft fair director for four years over at the old Coliseum, and we had to uh, do the shows over there on ice because the hockey team, you know, was still there. By the time we moved down here to Benton Convention Center, PCI had sort of um, grown into a, a fairly good regional national source. And there were, um, I remember there were comments at one time that PCI was one of the top three craft fairs in the country at that particular time. I'd say the majority of artists are open and sharing and giving and, and friendly and there's a camaraderie there and you help out. You see it every uh, time the fair is set up. You know, somebody's trying to roll a cart. Oh, here, let me give you a hand. Or let me help you unpack. I mean, it's just there. Unknowingly, we had the ability to talk to people at a craft fair and explain what we did. And it was not a humdrum affair, you know, where you just make so many of these and so many of these. You know, we talked about the heart that was going into the work because, you know, that's what we were teaching. I think that's what made a lot of us initially successful in merchandising our work. That just, you know, added on to our ability to keep transitioning from object to object to idea to idea. Piedmont Crafton was just in the forefront of that wave of interest and inquiry into the handcraft movement developing into, you know, the art handcraft movement. Piedmont Craftsman is dealing with the transition uh, and with the internet. Piedmont Craftsman is going in all those different venues and, and working out a way to stay viable for its members.